Hello, I'm Gillian from Museum on the Mound. If you haven't heard of us before, we're a museum about banks and about money. And it's money that I want to talk to you about today, specifically some money that you might not have thought about for many years. It's not just going to be me talking today, however, there'll be many chances for you to get involved too. Every now and again, you'll see a phrase pop up on the screen, pause for thought and a question. When you see that, this is your chance to stop the video and to answer the question, maybe with the people you're around, or if you're watching this on your own, just to have a think about the question. But as I mentioned, it's about money, and that's where I'd like to start today. Specifically, I'd like to start with this object in front of me here. You might recognize this. Perhaps you used one of these. Maybe your parents did. This is a home safe. And these were given out by banks as a way of helping you to save at home. They were quite cunning in many ways. You'll see today I have a key. But if you were using this at home in the 50s or 60s, you wouldn't have had a key. When this was full, you would have taken it to a bank branch where it would have been opened and the money deposited straight into your account and then home safe given back to you. But because I have a key, I feel we should have a look inside. So if I can get this open. Well, here's what we have. The money inside here, you can call many names. You might call this the old money, pre-decibel money, LSD, or maybe even pounds, shillings, and pence. But it's certainly money you won't have used for a long time. Let's have a look more closely at what those coins specifically were. I have some here. Starting from the largest of our coins, we have the half crown. Next to that, we have the florin, the shilling, the sixpence, threepence, the penny, the halfpenny, and last but not at all least, the farthing. But our first question today is, can you remember how many pennies there were in a pound and how many shillings? Pause for thought. Can you remember how many pennies and shillings there were in a pound? So did you get the answer right? Well, there were, of course, 20 shillings to a pound or 240 pennies. But why were there 240 pennies to a pound? Well, this goes back hundreds of years to when we had silver pennies. If you put 240 silver pennies on a scale, it would weigh exactly one pound in weight. So it all makes sense. But how much were these other coins worth in relation to each other? Well, let's start with the shilling as our base point. There was, of course, 12 pennies to a shilling, or there were four threepences, or two sixpences. Moving up from that, there were two shillings to a florin, and the biggest of the coins were two shillings and sixpence to a half crown. When we were making this film, we were thinking a lot about what these coins were worth and what we'd spend them on. And I spent a lot of time talking to two sisters called Joan and Barbara. They were growing up, working and starting their lives in the late 50s and early 60s. And lucky for us, they could remember a lot about what they spent their money on. Take Barbara, for example, the younger sister. In 1960, she was a schoolgirl and a member of the guides. After her guide meetings, she would cycle home via the local chip shop. She remembers that a small bag of chips was fourpence, a big bag of chips was sixpence, and you could buy pickled onions for a penny each. So what did she get? Small bag of chips and two pickled onions for a sixpence. Pause for thought. What did you used to buy for sixpence? Did you get pocket money when you were growing up? And what did you spend it on? So we've looked at some of the larger coins, but let's look very briefly at the smallest of the coins. We have here the penny, the halfpenny, and the farthing. There was, of course, four farthings to the penny, making it the smallest coin in use in Britain. 
You'll have to have a good memory to remember the farthing being used because it went out of circulation in 1960. But have you ever thought about why a farthing is called a farthing? Again, this goes back to medieval times in the days of the silver pennies. In those days, these pennies, well, they were the only coins we had. There were no coins larger and no coins smaller. So what would you do if you wanted to buy something that cost less than a penny? Well, the answer was very simple. The shopkeeper would literally cut your penny into pieces. So for a halfpenny change, you'd receive half a penny. If you needed something smaller than that, they would cut your penny into quarters. And these tiny little pieces of coin were known as farthings, which eventually became farthing. But from our smallest coins, let's look at some notes instead. I don't quite know why, but this is my favourite banknote. It's the 10 bob or 10 shilling note. Now, when I spoke to Joan, the older of the two sisters, she remembers having a 10 shilling note. And she said that if you had one, you felt like you were rich. Pause for thought. Can you remember when you first received a 10 bob note? Why did you get it? And what did you do with it? So if having a 10 bob note made you feel rich, having this next note would make you feel very flush indeed. This was curled up in our home safe and is very delicate, but it is a pound note. For many people, the first time they would have had their own pound note was when they received their first wage packet. And for Joan, that happened in 1959 when she got her first full-time job. She worked in the wages department of an engineering firm. And lucky for us, we have that wage here because she could remember exactly what she received. So let's have a look. So in here we have two 10 bob notes. So that's a pound. One, two, five, six. We've got eight half crowns. That'd be another pound. Oh, we've got a bit of loose change. I'll move that to one side. We have some more half crowns, another four half crowns, three florins, a shilling, 17 shillings, and our change here, we have sixpence. Two pounds, 17 shillings, and sixpence. Pause for thought. What was your first job? Can you remember what you were paid and what you spent it on? So let's move forward a few more years into the mid 60s. By this point, Barbara has left school and she's now at college and working part time at the weekend. She worked in a baker's shop and she can remember that you could buy a scotch pie for 10 pence or tea cakes, two for threepence or three for threepence halfpenny. And what about Joan? Well, she was still working full time, but like most girls of her age, she enjoyed going out at the weekends, especially to the dancing. Of course, you can't do anything for free. Her night out's going to cost her some money. And lucky for us, she can remember what she used to spend. First of all, you couldn't go out without having your hair done. A shampoo and set, including her bouffant hairpiece, would cost her five shillings. So she's had her hair done, but she'll need a few things to go out with. First of all, well, attitudes were a bit different to smoking in the 60s. Half the population, including Joan, were smokers. A packet of 20 cigarettes for her night out would cost her two and six. The dance hall that Joan liked to go to didn't have an alcohol license, but if she wanted to stop in a pub beforehand for a drink, a Bacardi and Coke, her tipple of choice, would set her back another three shillings and four pence. Then on to the dancing. The marine ballroom, where she's heading tonight, would have an entrance fee on the door of five bob. So all in all, her night out, not including non-alcoholic drinks inside the ballroom, maybe the bus home, has cost her 15 shillings and 10 pence. Pause for thought. What were your nights out like when you were young? Where did you go? What did you do?
So let's move forward in time to Christmas 1970. Life certainly changed at this point for Joan and Barbara because they're both married and living in their first homes. And Christmas 1970 was to be the last before a huge change happened in our money. But more of that to come. But what could you do on Christmas Day 1970? Well, there was plenty on the television for you to watch. At five o'clock that day, you had Billy Smart's Circus Spectacular. Later in the evening was the Morecambe and Wise Christmas Special. And if you were staying up late, a Christmas Night with the Stars with Scylla Black. And what's under your Christmas tree that year? Well, there's plenty for the kids. In the top 10 favorite presents that year, well, amongst them, there was my personal favorite, the Cindy doll. You could also have things such as Viewmasters. And very popular that year was the Apollo space landing rocket. After all, the moon landing had only been about a year beforehand, so it was very fresh in people's memories. And what did we have for the adults that year? Well, if you were feeling sophisticated, how about a goblin tease maid? Or if you wanted to impress your friends, a hostess trolley. Neither of these came cheap though. A tease maid would cost you £27 and a hostess trolley would be an eye-watering £79. Bear in mind that in 1970, the average wage for a working man was £28.11 and for a woman was £13.19 and tenpence. Pause for thought. What's your favourite memory of Christmas? What were your favourite Christmas TV specials? Just two months or so after Christmas 1970 came the biggest change in our money for over a thousand years. The 15th of February 1971 was Decimalisation Day. Gone were the pounds, shillings and pence to be replaced by the money we use today, divisible by 10. I have one of the early sets here, it's all what we're very familiar with today. But it was confusing for people, it took a lot to get used to. So to ease the transition, several things were done. First of all, the 10 pence and 5 pence were introduced early in 1968 and they could be used alongside the shilling and the florin. And I don't know if you remember that you could still use the florin and the shilling as a 10 pence and a 5 pence up until the 1990s. The 50 pence was also introduced in 1969 as the equivalent of the 10 bob note. Not only that, there were plenty of guides available, games, decimal counters, all manner of things to help you to get used to the new money. It still took a lot of getting used to though. Joan, for example, remembers for a long time counting back the new money into old money to make sure she knew what she was really spending. Pulse for thought. Do you remember the change to the new coins? Did you have trouble working it out? But that's all we have time to look at today. I hope you've enjoyed this look back through the money of the past. And if you'd be interested in doing a bit more, we have various reminiscence games and quizzes and other activities available on our website, museumonthemound.com. So please do have a look at those too. But for now, thank you for joining me today and happy reminiscing.